So here's the deal. I'm going to make a race between this piece of light and my friend on the rocket. Who is gonna be faster at infinity? And you probably know that light travels at the maximum possible speed. So how could my friend possibly outrun the light? And you can easily see this by looking at the space-time diagram where light travels at a 45 degree angle. And every massive body must travel in this region with angle less than 45 degrees. So light is gonna be always first everywhere. And that is true, and therefore I am going to make the rules of the game slightly different. I am going to give my friend an infinite amount of fuel, and also I am going to give him some initial separation advantage. But will this be of any help to my friend though? Special relativity doesn't allow us to travel faster than light, and therefore no matter how hard you accelerate, you won't ever reach the speed of light. And therefore with this infinite fuel and spatial separation, we only prolong the inevitable, right? Well, no, that's a false. Let's take a look at the space-time diagram again. An inertial observer will always have a straight world line. An observer with a constant proper acceleration will have a curved world line. If we limit ourselves to just Newtonian physics, accelerated observer would follow a parabola curve in the space-time diagram. And you can see that from this point, his speed would be faster than light, and he could outrun the light. But in special relativity, accelerated observers follow a different curve, which looks like this. It is a hyperbola given by these parametric equations. This hyperbola has an asymptotic line that is exactly at 45 degrees. This basically means that the observer can only asymptotically approach the light, but never cross. And therefore, any light sent from a certain initial distance won't ever reach accelerating observer. If you send a photon from this distance, then it would catch up at infinity. But if you put it a little further, then it would have a finite separation at infinity. But this is just mathematics, right? But what is actually happening in the reference frame of the accelerated observer? Since this light beam won't ever reach him, does this mean that it's stationary relative to him? To answer what's going on, I need to again recall the equivalence principle, which states that there is no physical difference between being in accelerated rocket and being stationary in a gravitational field. So if you are out there in the universe and you fire rocket engines, then the universe around you would behave exactly the same way as if there was a uniform gravitational field spanning the entire universe. We know that clocks tick at different rates in a gravitational field. And the deeper in the gravitational field the clock is, the slower it ticks. Therefore, this is exactly the same case for accelerating observer. Clocks ahead of him tick faster than his own, and clocks below him tick slower. At a certain distance below the accelerated observer, the clock stops. Because due to this gravitational field, there is an event horizon that behaves exactly the same as an event horizon of a black hole, from which not even light can escape. And this point, the position of this event horizon, is exactly the threshold from which no light will ever catch you. Okay, there is one question you might ask. If I send a photon from this position, according to inertial observer, it's getting closer and closer. Does this mean that the event horizon is also approaching the accelerated observer as he travels in the universe? This is certainly not the way how gravitational field behaves, right? This is because this distance that the inertial observer measures between the light beam and the rocket is not what the observer on the rocket would measure. At this instant, the coordinates of the accelerated observer would look like this, and this would be his simultaneity plane. If you talk his coordinates at this point, they would look like this. As you can see for him, the moment you send the photon is in his simultaneity plane indefinitely, which means that this event is frozen in time, since it is exactly at the event horizon. 
Therefore, for accelerated observer, his four position from the origin is always equal to the distance to the origin. If you calculate the magnitude of a four position using these coordinates, you will find out that it's a constant. And therefore, the horizon is in a constant distance from the accelerated observer, which is given by this simple expression, which only depends on the speed of light and the magnitude of the proper acceleration. And this makes sense because the higher the proper acceleration, the closer the horizon is to you. Accelerated frames are really weird in special relativity. For example, if an accelerated observer wanted to construct a coordinate system made of other observers that are spatially separated by a constant distance, then these observers would have to accelerate less to keep the constant distance, while the observers behind would have to accelerate more. And this is how such coordinate system would look like, where each line represents a world line of a co-accelerating observer, keeping the constant distance. In these coordinates, superluminal speed is perfectly possible due to effects like length contraction. Because as you accelerate, the spatial distance between two inertial observers is becoming shorter, not due to movement, but due to relativistic contraction of length. And as I already showed you, light doesn't travel at the speed of light, but it can even be stationary relative to you. But to me, this is really interesting that just by turning your rocket engines on, you will make a part of the universe causally disconnected to you, and nothing from that region can affect you. If you were accelerating at 1g, then everything behind roughly 10 light years would no longer be your concern, as long as you remain accelerating. So if somebody tells you that you can't outrun your problems, then just tell them that you can, but you just need an infinite amount of fuel. Learning is a pain, especially when you try to learn something difficult and you have no way of visualizing the concept. And this is where my sponsor Brilliant can help, because with Brilliant you learn from first principles, by actively interacting with the concept. You can find lessons from fields like math, data, programming and AI. Each lesson is made of small chunks, and each chunk takes only around 15 minutes, so that you don't feel overwhelmed. And since this method of learning is extremely effective, those 15 minutes is enough to learn something new every day. And because you will be actively solving problems, you will also improve your critical thinking skills in general. Check out, for example, this course on vectors. Vectors are important mathematical tool used in physics. And in this course, you will gain intuition behind basic mathematical operations on vectors, but also on more complicated ones as you progress into more advanced lessons. If you want to give Brilliant a try, you can do it for free for 30 days using the link brilliant.org slash problems and solutions or click in the link in the description and you also get a 20% discount on annual premium subscription so thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video general relativity is over 100 years old and Maxwell's electrodynamics is even older so you might think that nothing in these theories can surprise us but when you combine these two fields, some problems might become surprisingly difficult to understand. For example, whether a charged particle accelerated by gravitational field would radiate or not. Despite some resolution being proposed, physicists still argue about this problem to this day, and even publish papers about it. And it all comes down to whether a radiation can be relative when you transfer between uniform and accelerated frames. If you are interested in this problem, check out this video where I talk about it in more detail. But I must warn you, I am not 100% confident about what the answer should be. And I hopefully make another video about it in the future. Thanks for watching.